Hi, I'm Dr. William Starziak, and I'm creating this video to help share a very simple meditation technique. I recommend this one to my patients frequently, so I want to have this up as a resource for people to refer back to. Now, this is the most common approach to meditation, and that is following the breath. In Buddhism, this is considered a form of samatha meditation, or focusing on one thing. But it is not, um, it doesn't carry with it any particular religious dogmas or belief systems. It is a way of directly experiencing what is, allowing the mind to relax, allowing it to become clear and focused. So someone from any religious practice can use this uh, technique. And what it is, is simply turning the attention inward to the body sensation of breathing. So then we're aware when we breathe in and we're aware when we breathe out. And in this practice, there is no control placed upon the breath. We simply allow the breath to move in whatever way feels most natural. The ideal posture to take up when doing this practice is one where the spine is erect and unsupported. The ear, the opening for the ear is in line with the shoulder, which is in line with the uh, prominence of the hip. Uh, the easiest way to achieve this posture is to have the hips higher than the knees. So if you're sitting on the ground using a cushion and taking up one of the many cross-legged positions, there's full lotus, half lotus, uh, Burmese, um, those are the main ones, so, or simply cross-legged. Uh, and you can, in this video, we won't go over all of the different positions. Those are easy enough to look up online Probably the, the simplest cross-legged position to begin with is Burmese. Uh, so a quick Google search, you'll be able to find that. Alternatively, one can use a chair where, they, where they're high enough that the hips are above the knees or place a cushion on it, or even use a kneeling stool. There are kneeling stools that go right on the ground, so the knees are on the ground. And there are other ones where uh, the knees actually rest on part of the stool. So try these different positions and see which one is most comfortable for you. And then when you're ready, you simply close your eyes. They can be completely closed or they can be two thirds of the way closed and then focusing at a point about three feet in front of you if you're sitting on the ground. If you're sitting on a chair, it would end up being about six feet in front of you. And as you focus on the breath, even if your eyes are partly open, your gaze will unfocus because your awareness will turn inward. And you want to stay with the breath for the entire inhalation and the entire exhalation. In the beginning, it's very helpful to count. So when you're breathing in, you count and when you're breathing out, you count two, and so on until you reach 10. Once you reach 10, you can start back over at one. Frequently, you'll find yourself forgetting what number you're on or finding yourself having counted over 10 or counting and keeping track but paying no attention still. In any of those circumstances, what there is to do in the practice of meditation is to bring the awareness right back to the sensation of breathing. And it can be on any part of the sensation. If it's most comfortable to focus at the nostrils, you can focus there. Or as the air enters the sinus cavity, you can focus there. Or in the heart region, as the chest expands, one of the most common places for beginners or for advanced practitioners is the area directly underneath the belly button and in a few inches. This allows us 
to easily breathe from our abdomen so that the shoulders remain relaxed and we feel the abdomen moving forward as we breathe in and back towards the spine as we breathe out. Rather than breathing up high in the chest, which creates more of a feeling of anxiety to breathe that way. So that's what there is to the practice, is to simply feed all of our attention, all of our awareness into the sensation of breathing. Whenever we're distracted, we direct ourselves back. There was a Zen teacher who described it. This is uh, Shunru Suzuki Roshi. He described it as pulling weeds and putting them under the tree you want to grow. So these, these thoughts about whatever distraction is like a weed that you would pull and place under your tree of focus. There is some nuance to this practice. If one becomes distracted by a thought of anger or jealousy or greed, instead of simply returning to the focus, one can first create a positive response, noticing the greed and investigating it for a moment and then finding a way that one can be generous or noticing the jealousy, investigating it and finding a way that one can be happy for what someone else has. So in the beginning, it, it is easiest to simply focus on the breathing. But once your practice is established, then allowing yourself these, these small detours are very helpful in cultivating uh, happiness and freedom. Some Sur surrounding practices that can help. You may want to lay down and relax first for a few minutes to let any tension out of your body or do some gentle stretching beforehand. I have some other YouTube videos with uh, stretches for different parts of the body that could be helpful. Um, for relaxation, you can lay down and, and do the same practice laying down. And then once you're relaxed, you could then sit up. This is also a very excellent base for other meditation approaches. Uh, where there, there are so many. Um, there's visualization, there's mantra recitation, there, those can be combined. There are contemplative practices where things like impermanence or compassion are contemplated. Uh, there are practices where you investigate a question like a cone and Zen meditation. But all of these, or even prayer, would be another form of meditation, praying for the benefit of not just oneself, but of, of all living beings. Um, but all of these practices take a degree of focus. And this first practice of following the breath helps to cultivate that base focus. Now, it doesn't have to be the breath. It can be a flower. It can be a candle. Uh, it can be an image, a mandala, a symbol something from a particular religious tradition. For the Samatha meditation, it can be any object one can focus their mind on. It can even be sound. Um, so you don't have to be rigid about it. You can use a different focus every day if you wish. But what's important is to practice it regularly. Just like going to the gym, just like learning a new language, just like developing any ability, it needs to be done repeatedly. And it can be difficult to begin something new and establish it. One of the best strategies to be successful is to do what you know you can do. So if you say minimum, I know every day I can take five minutes to do this because it's important to me. Great. But then also be aware of, you know, some days I can probably do 10 minutes. If I, you know, if I wake up early enough, if whatever, or if I get ready for bed quick enough, because you can do it at any time of the day. But it's nice to set a specific time so that it, the practice doesn't get lost in the bustle of the day, but to really protect one particular time. So you have a minimum you know you can do, a target where you're like, yeah, good amount of the time I can do 
this, 10 minutes, minimum five. I can sometimes do 10. And then like, wow, there'll be some days where I'm going to set aside 30 minutes to do it. Maybe that happens once or twice a month in the beginning. Or, or some system like that where you set up a range uh, of what you're aiming for. And then be persistent with it. And in this practice, you'll see the, um, the mi microcosm reflecting the macrocosm. So maybe you'll find a week has gone by and you haven't meditated. This is just like if you're in your meditation and minutes have gone by and you haven't been paying attention to your breath. You've been distracted. In either of these situations, the only thing there is to do is to recommit. You know, beating yourself up, becoming hopeless, creating a story about how you're no good at meditation, creating a story about how you're too busy. Any other thing that you do is just more of the same distraction. All there is is to recommit to your commitment, to remind yourself of why this is important, and to restart with it. And this is the same as with anything that you want to get good at. Uh, it's the same practice. You need to refocus onto it if you've become um, distracted. So please, if you have any questions about meditation, um, or even if you're interested in uh, what my clinic offers on a whole, uh, contact me. You can call me. You can text me at my office, 317-410-9978. You can email me at uh, info, I-N-F-O, at drstarziak.com. That's D-R-S-T-A-R-S-I-A-K.com. And you can find out more information online um, at my website, www.drstarsiak.com. Thank you very much.